What started this talk? It started in April. There was a tweet by Bert Miller from Flashbots about a Moonbird that was actually bought for 44 ETH and then immediately sold in one single transaction for 240 ETH. And uh, when I saw this, I was like, wow, this is pretty insane. And we uh, I really dived into the topic. So at first, I'm going to give a short introduction. What is MEV? Um, basically. Who who can say here what happens if you click like swap on Uniswap uh, in in a one sentence maybe Tr the transaction gets submitted to the mempool uh, and the tr the technical view is you have uh, the public mempool where you can submit the transaction and in traditional finance you only have like a centralized server and then the transactions get uh, executed with the public mempool though people uh, can see your transaction and they uh, can insert their own transaction before or even, uh, I mean, the miner itself can insert the transactions, uh, manipulate them, block them, and uh, yeah, there's a more technical explanation about like what's different in POS in the last slide, but uh, due time, yeah. So basically, yeah, MEV exists <laughs> also in like all the auctions. It's basically if you skip the auction, you make a contract uh, with the seller itself. In this case, the seller is uh, the block space. And yeah, what is an NFT? Um, for me, it was kind of interesting to understand that NFT is mo is kind of like the same as an ERC20 token, but with an ID that was much more understandable to me than like non-fungible token. And um, there, like, if you look at Google search volume, uh, you will see that like one to ten thousand people Google how to create an ERC20 token each month, and like how people want to create an NFT, it's like 10,000 to 100,000 people. So you could assume that NFTs are like very mainstream. And um, also the the gas, if you look at Ethereum, is kind of high uh, from NFT projects. So I, like OpenSea is always in the like top 10 of gas spenders. You can uh. see the beautiful NFT project on the side. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so another question, what happens if you like like make a collection bid uh, on a NFT site. It doesn't work on every marketplace, but uh, maybe uh, someone knows it. But now, so basically, if you um, click and make a collection bid uh, on an NFT marketplace, the usually the auction is off chain. But once the 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 co like the contract gets settled in the mempool, people can still like uh, do arbitrage. So let's dive into this rabbit hole. So what is an NFT arbitrage? Basically, you buy the NFT at one marketplace and you sell it at the other marketplace. Uh, what, what is special about it is in crypto, you can do it in a single transaction in one block. There's some particular cases about like NFTs and MEV or in general like value extraction. So uh, the, the Moonberg example is uh, pretty uh, extreme, I find, and also uh, the ape coin, maybe you've heard of it. They had a, a, a token for every NFT holder, and there was uh, a, a, a trader who basically lent the NFTs, um, uh, claimed the tokens, and then sold them immediately. So he netted more than like six hundred thousand dollars, I think. So what what can we do about it? Because I mean, if you look at the 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 life cycle of an NFT, it's like pretty mainstream, and I don't assume like. Bill Murray uh, knows like what happens in the mempool. And um, so there's a couple of re resources to educate yourself. Um, there's this like website, MEV tools, which shows like also how to like mint uh, an NFT or like submit a transaction through flashbots, uh, which is basically making the skipping the mempool. There's other ways you can avoid it, right? So if you have an auction where you have a commit reveal, you first commit. And then once you you place a bit, you reveal your bit, and you you cannot do, like front run it because you need the commit first. So when you buy an ENS domain, you have to wait one minute. That's basically the reason why. So the life cycle of an NFT, you have the minting process. Um, here it can like lead to gas wars. So uh, I don't know. There was a, a f soccer project that actually had like 
one million dollars in gas fees and like the the nft mint was like less valuable than uh, like it's crazy right and if you like submit a transaction to flashbots um it basically if it fails you would you don't need to pay pay gas so that's important but also um there's been cases where an nft project might be super successful and people were like bribing the miners to make sure that they mint it. So even if you're like a normal consumer, you don't have any chance to mint it, right? And the holding time of an NFT, I mean, it indicates basically if the NFTs are flipped. And uh, yeah, the transfer function um, is basically for like auctions. And um, yeah, so <laughs> what can we do? And one one idea is we just fork the ERC-71 uh, ERC uh, contract. And if you think about, okay, what is atomic arbitrage? You sell it and buy it in one block. So we just simply lock the last transfer and we uh, block the, the ID from being transferred twice per block. Um, I mean, it's, it's more like, it's a very simple solution, um, but uh, yeah, obviously some, some contracts might not work with it. Um, so what what are what else can we do? What are like conclusions? Yeah, first uh, of all, there's different stakeholders. So the markets they just want to sell the the artists just want to sell the users. I mean they want to don't maybe don't spend so much money. Uh, NFT is a bit like long tail. There's been a case where somebody just wrote a function for a I think it was a potato or something, <laughs> and uh, the ver the volume is like pretty uh, variable. So it might not be uh, the the best trading for like a high volume. Um, trading company and yeah there's like different resources we've been working on a extension which shows like uh, MEV activity phishing activity and yeah time is over <laughs> uh, here's the sources thank you so much uh, thanks to Alan Bert Miller and uh, so many more maybe I, uh, I forgot some <laughs> and uh, you can find me on Twitter under uh, film France thank you so much <laughs>